Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. The Adventures of Superman. When the planet Krypton, home of a race of supermen, exploded into dust, the sole survivor was an infant boy who had been shot to Earth in a sealed rocket. Today, that boy, grown to manhood, is known as Superman, sworn enemy of the forces of evil. To aid him in his never-ending fight for truth and justice, he masquerades as Clark Kent, crime reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. His secret is carefully guarded. No one is aware that Kent is Superman. No one but you. <laughs> Join with us now on ABC as Superman matches wits and strength with a strange and baffling foe in an exciting transcribed adventure entitled The Mystery of the Little Men. It is long after midnight. Lois Lane, star girl reporter for the Metropolis Daily Planet, is asleep in the bedroom of her 12th floor apartment. All is silent, save for the faint ticking of a clock on the night table beside her bed. Then suddenly, without warning, the dark silence is broken by the eerie, high-pitched tinkle of strange laughter. Awakened, Lois sits bolt upright in bed. Who's there? The only answer is the shrill, spine-chilling laughter. Reaching out blindly in the darkness, Lois switches on the bed lamp. Her frightened eyes sweep the room, and the horror-stricken scream wells up in her throat. But panic tightens her vocal cords, makes it soundless. Somehow her hand gropes for and finds the telephone. Automatically, she lifts the receiver and dials a number. Hello? Clark, this is Lois. Who? Lois Lane. Lois, what happened to your voice? Clark, can you come right over? Over where? To my apartment. Where do you think? Why, what's the matter? Oh, must you ask interminable questions? Isn't it enough that I call you at midnight without... Easy, easy. You're all excited. Of course I'm excited. I'm frantic. I'm petrified. Why, what happened, Lois? Nothing's happened yet. But there are three <laughs> ugly little men standing on my windowsill laughing at me. <laughs> Believe me, I wasn't dreaming. I saw them and I heard them. You're sure about I'm that? I'm positive they were there on that windowsill. Three of them? Yes, all dressed alike in, in high hats, striped trousers, and, and, and frock coats. And they carried little umbrellas. Why the umbrellas? Now, how should I know? Uh, how tall did you say they were? About 12 inches, and their faces were just hideous. They were all shriveled up like, like old men. Uh, w w what did you have for dinner tonight, Lois? I had some... Are you trying to be funny? No, no, not at all. Well, I'm just trying to... for the last to... time, it wasn't a dream and it wasn't a nightmare. And yeah, okay, all... okay, okay. Is this the window sill where they were? Yes. The window was open from the bottom the way it is now? Yes. How do you think they got up to the 12th floor? There's no fire escape. Oh, be careful, Clark. Don't lean out so far. I'm okay. Well, there's no sign of them now. I suggest you turn out the light and go to sleep. Oh, you do? Well, that's fine. And what if they come back? Oh, now, Lois, listen to me. I They're will not... not listen to you because I know exactly what you're going to say. You think I'm a crazy, hysterical female. Well, I'm only You think I dreamed this or I'm making it up or, or heaven only knows what. What would you like me to think? Never mind. Thank you for coming over, Mr. Kent. Thank you and good night. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Kent. Good morning, Beanie. I've been waiting for you to come in, Mr. Kent. I want to ask you something. Oh, let's go to my office. Too noisy out here. Has Miss Lane come in yet? I haven't seen her. Oh, good grief. It's hot in here. Open the window. Yes, Open the window, will you, Beanie? Right away. Oh, golly, that's how people catch cold sitting in hot, stuffy rooms. Oh, yes, that's better. That's better. Thanks, Beanie. Now, what's on your mind? Mr. Kent, do, uh, do you know anything about 
dreams. Dreams? Yeah. <laughs> Not much, I'm afraid. I know they're supposed to mean something. No, I, I read that someplace. You worried about a dream, Beanie? Well, kind of. If you dreamed Mr. White fired you, forget it. He fires all of us twice a week regularly. No, no, it was nothing like that. Well, then what was it? Well, it's kind of hard to explain, but I dreamed I was asleep, and then I woke up. Yes? And I saw something. Something awful strange. What, Beanie? I saw three little men standing on my windowsill. Say that again. I saw three little men standing on my windowsill. Was this last night, Beanie? Yeah. Were they dressed in high hats, striped trousers, and frock coats? And did they carry little umbrellas? Yeah, but how'd you know? Did they laugh? You're kind of crazy like... Darling, Mr. Kent... Beanie, listen to me. I don't want you to breathe a word about this to anyone. Do you understand? Yeah, sure, but Not I... a word, Beanie. <laughs> yes, Chief? Come into my office, Kent. Okay. I've got to go in to see Mr. White now, Beanie. I'll talk to you later. In the meantime, remember, not a word. Okay, Mr. Kent. <laughs> You heard me call the travel agency and check on those folks tickets. Morning, Chief. They don't care if you called a dozen times. Call again. Of all the stupid numbskulled individuals, that girl takes the case. But I called three times, Mr. White. Great Jesus, don't you think the travel agency was doing us a favor? You planning a trip? I don't know what I'm planning, Kent. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Before very long, I'll be sitting in a booby hatch cutting out paper dolls. Now what happened? Everything. Everything. I've got to get away. Good idea. I'm tired. I'm worn out. Every nerve in my body is frazzled. What I need is a good long sea voyage with no presses, no typewriters, no telephones, and no people. Sure, sure. If I could arrange it, I'd charter the Queen Mary and sail to Europe all by myself. Anything special bring this on, Chief? No, nothing special. It's just everything. The publishers screaming for more circulation, the advertisers screaming for reduced page rates, the unions screaming for higher wages, and then last night. Last night was the payoff. What happened? You won't believe this, Ken. But last night, I took the first drink of whiskey I've had in five years, ever since Doc Summers told me to lay off. Oh? Came home from the office feeling like a wet dish rag and took a drink. Just one. And do you know what that one drink did to me? What? It gave me the heebie-jeebies. Really? I took that one drink, had my dinner, and then went up to my room, figuring I'd read a little and then get a good night's sleep. And do you know what happened when I walked into my room? No, what? Now, 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 mind you, Kent. I only had one small drink, so I couldn't have been drunk. No, of course not. Matter of fact, I kind of debated with myself about taking another one. Well, anyway, take my word for it. I was cold sober. Uh Ah. At least I thought I was till I walked into that room. Well, you still haven't told me what happened. Oh, haven't I? No. Well, maybe I ought to see a psychiatrist instead of taking a trip. Who knows? What happened, Chief? That one drink gave me the heebie-jeebies. That's what. How? How? Listen to this. I walked into the room, turned on the light, and do you know what I saw? What? Three little old men standing on my windowsill. Oh, don't look at me like that, Kent. I'm not crazy. I know I didn't actually see them. Oh, but you did. Huh? You did see them. They were about 12 inches tall, and they were dressed in top hats, striped trousers, and frock coats. Great Jesus, go. And they laughed at you. Shrill, high-pitched laughter. Oh, Kent, please. Don't do things like that to me. I've got a bad heart. How, how, take it easy, how, how did you know what I saw? Lois and Beanie saw the little men last night, too. What? Now, don't lose control. We've got to be sensible about this. Sensible? Sensible? How can you be sensible about something that doesn't make sense? Please, Chief. Get I... Lois in here. Get Beanie in here. Take Do I easy. want to hear it from their own lips? Chief, please don't get excited. Well, who, 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 who's excited? Get them in here, Ken. Don't stand there like a dummy. Get them in here. <laughs> Where did it? Oh, oh, it's it's please, Beanie, Chief. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you all talk at once, we're not going to get anywhere. Where do you expect to get? Well, there must be an answer to all this. When did you see the little man, Chief? About 8 o'clock, maybe 8.30. And you, Beanie? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Kent. I thought it was all a dream. So did Mr. Kent last night. Yeah, all right, Lois. Let's dispense with the sarcasm. You can't remember what time it was, Beanie? Well, how can I remember when I didn't even know I was awake? Stop asking him questions. I'm going nuts listening to his answers. Oh, God. Yeah, all, right, all right, Beanie. All right, skip it. We'll assume the little man visited you between 8 or 8.30 when the chief saw them and midnight when Lois saw them. Well, that's an interesting assumption, Mr. Kent, but it doesn't hold water. Why not? For the simple reason that you're assuming that there are only three little men and that those three made the rounds. But maybe there are nine or 90 or, or 900. 
Maybe the earth is going to be overrun with them. Gee, well, well, that's nonsense, Lois. If there were that many, we would have heard about it by now. Maybe we will. Lois, listen. Granted that the little men exist... What do you mean, granted? There's no question about it. Okay, there's no question about it. Somewhere in this city, there are at least three ugly little men, about 12 inches tall, who stand on people's windowsills and laugh. Oh, gives me the cold shivers. The question is, where did they come from? And this is important. Why did they choose to visit you, Beanie, and the chief out of seven million people? You tell us. Well, on the face of it, you weren't chosen at random. You all work for the Daily Planet. Clark, so do 400 other people. I know. Can't you what's the difference why they visited us? The big question is, who are they and where'd they come from? Could they be midgets? Twelve inches tall. Well, what about pygmies? I read in a book. When what? did you ever read a book? Oh, here we go again. Oh, gosh. She was. Mr. White was just kidding, Beanie. Skip it. Now, Clark. What? I don't know what you were going to propose or how you think this thing should be handled, but I'll tell you one thing. I, for one, will not spend another night in my apartment until I'm convinced that those horrible little creatures aren't coming back. Why, I, I'd rather sleep in the, in the park. Oh, that's ridiculous. It isn't well, ridiculous. They can't possibly hurt you. I'm not so sure. Oh. If they're pygmies, they might have poison arrows. Will somebody please shut him up before I throttle him? Okay, I won't say another word. Put that in writing. I'll give you a $5 raise. Gosh, you will? No. Oh, Chief Beanie, please. Beanie. Now, now, wait. Listen to me, all of you. Obviously, we can't give this thing any publicity until we know more about it. But at the same time, we've got to be in a position to grab these uh, little men if they appear again. Oh, don't look at me. I'm not grabbing anything. Nobody's asking you to, Lois. What I'm getting at is that we'll have to post police guards around all your houses. And in order to do that, I'll have to tell Inspector Henderson what happened. So what? Well, so I may have a hard time getting him to believe it. Whether he believes it or not, if we want police protection, we're going to get it. No, 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 Chief, please don't call him. I I'd better go down to headquarters and speak with him personally. Well, go ahead, then. Don't waste time. I'd better go with you, Carl. Okay. What about me? You stay right here and do some work. What do you think this, a charity institution? Come on, Beanie, before you lose your job and your head. Don't take him with you, Lois. I won't. And get back as soon as you can. I want to know what Henderson agrees to do. And he'd better do the right thing or there'll be trouble. Inspector, Miss Lane and I are here to talk to you about a rather unusual problem. Well, now, Kent, uh, unless this is important, I, I mean very important, I'd rather like to skip it today. Oh. I'm a... Uh, I'm a little under the weather. Yes, you do look like you've got a cold. Your eyes are all puffy. Oh, no, 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 it isn't that. I I mean, I'm all right. Physically, that is. I, well, of course, I didn't get much sleep last night, but after all, I've had sleepless nights before. Departmental problems? Uh, no. No, this one's personal. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean Well, that. now, don't get the wrong impression. I No, it's just... Well, a... I mean, perhaps personal was a bad word for it. Well, I don't you know. don't have to. Well, I, the... what, I, what I didn't mean was that... Well, anyway, my wife hasn't left me or anything like that. You don't have to explain or apologize, Inspector. Well, hang it all. That is the trouble. I want to tell somebody, but... And I'm kind of afraid. I... Hey, look, let's forget it, huh? Suppose we have your problem. Okay. I'll give it to you as briefly as I can. Good. Last night, between the hours of 8 and 12, Miss Lane, Perry White, and Beanie, one of our copy boys, were visited by three little men about 12 inches tall. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute, Kent. What? Were they dressed in top hats, striped trousers, and frock coats? Yes, but how did you know? I woke up at 2 o'clock this morning, and they were standing on my windowsill. We'll be back in a moment for part two of the mystery of the little men. But first, here is an important Christmas season message from the well-known newspaper columnist and radio commentator, Drew Pearson. <laughs> And now, back to the adventures of Superman and part two of The Mystery of the Little Men. When Police Inspector Henderson announced that he too was visited by the mysterious top hatted little men, Clark Kent and Lois Lane were flabbergasted. Are you sure you saw them, Inspector? Well, what do you mean, am I sure? They were standing on my windowsill. Three of them, laughing like maniacs. I slipped out of bed and I went for my gun, but before I could get to it, they were gone. And I didn't sleep a wink the rest of the night. Well, Clark. Well, what? Well, that throws your theory into a cock hat. Theory? Up to now, it was only Daily Planet people who had the honor of being visited by those 
those hideous little creatures. Now they've added the police chief. Where's this going to stop? Well, what are they, Kent? They're little men, that's what they are. Be sensible, Lois. Well, all the unmitigated nerve, be sensible. Did you see them? No, well, but I... Well, I did. And Inspector Henderson did. I know. What did they look like to you, Inspector? Little men. Well, why don't you admit it, Clark? Because men don't grow 12 inches tall, that's why. So far as you know, which isn't very oh. far. Oh, well, now, Clark, you... Oh, excuse me. Yes, sure. <laughs> Henderson speaking. They're in Kent's office. They're in what's Kent's what's office. What? Who is it? You fool. The little men are in Kent's office right what now. Is Who is this? Harry White, you idiot. Where's Kent? Kent's right here. Tell him they're in his office. Okay, we'll be right over. <laughs> Now, just take it easy, Beanie. Slow and easy. How did you happen to go into my office? Well, I... I was... I was going to leave some letters on your desk. All right, so you opened the door and walked in. That's right. I didn't see nothing at first on account of... Well, I guess I wasn't looking. Yeah, that's logical. Please, Chief. Go ahead, Beanie. But then all of a sudden, I heard that crazy laughing, and I saw them standing on the windowsill. Remember this morning you asked me to open the window? Uh-huh. Well, that's where they were standing, right over there. What did you do? What did he do? He caused a riot. I never heard such shrieking in all my born days. Well, golly, what did you want me to do? Did you see them clearly, Beanie? Sure. What did they look like? Like, like little old men. Oh, no, why wasn't I here? Why? How soon after Mr. White called headquarters did they leave? Well, who knew? Instead of closing the window, this young genius here closed the door. Well, gee whiz. It's all right, Beanie. I wouldn't have gone near them either. Well, Henderson, what do you propose to do about it? <sighs> I don't know, Mr. White. And if you don't know, who does? We pay taxes to be protected against things like this. Well, the police department doesn't have an appropriation for rounding up little men. That's not funny. If you can't handle it, I'll get someone who can. Oh, Chief, all this bickering adds up to nothing. Now that they tried to pay me a visit, I'm convinced there's a pattern. It can't be accidental that four of us on the Daily Planet were chosen. But what about the inspector? Well, he's part of the pattern. What pattern? That's the problem. Once we know the pattern, once we know why we, of all people, were chosen... We're on our way to a solution. And in the meantime, I suppose those creatures are going to be scaring the life out of us. Oh, no, you don't have to worry about that. I'll give you all police protection. You won't give me anything. I'm getting on a boat and sailing to Timbuktu before I go crazy. One week it's a mechanical monster. The next week it's little men. The week after that it's heaven only knows what. This isn't a newspaper anymore. It's a nut house. All right? I'm not into anybody. It may not even be for you. Hello? Hello, is uh, Clark Kent there? Oh, just a minute, please, Oh, thanks. Hello. Hi, uh, Kent, you old luck. Who's this? Who is it? Hey, you sure forget your friends fast. Trouble is you hang around with uh, Superman too much. Everybody else is small potatoes. Who is this? <laughs> Candy Myers, you luck. Candy? It's Candy Myers. <laughs> Candy Myers. Oh, Candy, how are you? Well, man. Oh, we haven't seen or heard from you for a year. Where you been? Oh, tooting around. You got a few minutes to chew the fat? You mean on the phone? No, no, I'm just a couple of blocks away from here. Oh. All right if I drop over? Oh, well, sure thing. Okay, be seeing you. Hey, how about that? Good old Candy Myers. You remember him, Inspector? Remember him? How could I forget him? Probably well, maybe Candy can help us solve this mystery. Oh, maybe you've got something there, Beanie. Best private detective in the country. Talk to me about it, Kent. Yeah, sure, I will. Well, I've got to get back to headquarters. So call me and let me know what you decide to do. Okay, Inspector. I'll be in my office if you need me. Right, Chief. When is Candy coming up, Carl? Well, a few minutes, he said. I'll bring him right in when he gets here. Thanks, Beanie. Close the door, will you? Sure, Well, where did Candy say he'd been keeping himself? He didn't say. But you know something, Lois? What? I think I've got the solution to the mystery of the little men. <laughs> Why, you're looking younger and prettier than ever, Miss Lane. Oh, now, Candy, you say that to everybody. <laughs> and say, you haven't aged a day, Kent. Uh, how do you do it? Oh, it's the calm, easy newspaper life, Candy. <laughs> oh, it sure is. Mechanical monsters and little men. Huh? Oh, well, we, we have a, a problem, Candy. It's just a little problem, but maybe you can give us a hand. Uh, wait a minute. Did you say something about uh, little men? Oh, yes, Candy. They've been plaguing us. Uh, I don't believe it. What do you mean you don't believe it? Let's start from the beginning, Lois. Uh, no, wait, wait. Uh, this is a little crazy. Huh? You don't know how crazy. No, I mean me walking in here and you telling me about uh, little men. It's, uh, well, it's one of those mad things. I don't understand, Candy. Well, I got into town last night. I checked into the Metropolis Hotel. 
I went down to the bar and tossed off a couple of slugs, and then I turned in. At about 1 a.m., something woke me up. Oh, no, Candy, no. Yeah. Three little men were standing on my windowsill laughing at me. Police headquarters. Inspector Henderson, please. This is Clark Kent. Hold on. Henderson speaking. Clark Kent, Inspector. Oh, anything new? Yes, we're all going to meet at Perry White's house tonight. Well, what for? Well, we've decided to get all those who've seen the little men together in one location. Can you make it? Uh, what time? Oh, about nine or ten. Candy Myers is coming along. Incidentally, he saw the little men last night, too. He what? I'll tell you about it when I see you. Okay, I'll be there. Uh, oh, and Kent. Yes? I'd better bring along some of the boys with me, don't you think? No, no, just come alone. Well, that doesn't make sense. It will, I promise you. <laughs> This is a great way to spend New Year's Eve. All huddled in a half-dark room waiting for little men to crawl through an open window. Well, you got to admit, Miss Lane, it's exciting. Not to me, it isn't, Beanie. Say, uh, Kent. Yes, Inspector? I thought you said Candy Myers was going to be here. Well, he told Lois and me he would be. If this was all his idea. He'd better show up. Well, if he... What's that? Oh, relax. Mr. White snoring. Oh. Wake him up, Beanie. Golly, no, not me. He'd bite my head off. <laughs> Chief, wake up. Chief. <laughs> Where are they? They aren't here yet. You fell asleep. <laughs> you're crazy. I've been wide awake every minute. Oh. You snore like that when you're awake. I'd hate to hear you when you're asleep. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, me. Yes, you. Chief, keep your voice down. Let's not scare them off. Scare what off? Clark, with each passing minute, I'm becoming more and more convinced that this was just a dopey idea. And I second that. I third it. I'm going to bed. Oh, Chief, no. Something's bound to break soon. The only thing that's going to break around here is dawn, and I'm not waiting up for it. Just a little while longer, please. Clark. Yes? Back in the office, you told me you thought you knew the solution to the mystery of the little man. I think I do. Well, great Jesus, go, let's have it. Please. Why are we sitting here like, 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 like mummies? Chief, your voice. Hang my voice. If you know what this is all about, and I don't believe you do, let's have it. If you'll just be patient, I'm hoping to demonstrate the solution to you. Huh. You can demonstrate it to us hold after it, hold you... Hold it, hold it, quiet. What's up, Kent? They're coming. The little man. Yeah, she wears... Quiet, Beanie. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah. They're laughing. I don't see anything on the windowsill. Wait. <laughs> there they are. Great Caesar's ghost. Now do you believe us, Clark? Just look at them. Now I don't have to believe anything. Sit tight, everyone. I'll be right back. Wait a minute. Where are you going, Kent? I'll be back in a minute. Slipping out of the half-darkened living room, Clark Kent heads for the front door. Before he opens it, he quickly makes the transformation from a mild-mannered crime reporter to the brilliantly red and blue costumed figure of Superman. Then, opening the door quietly, he steps out into the darkness. In a timeless moment, his keen eyes spot a human figure crouched behind a bush near the open window where the fantastically garbed little men are laughing insanely. Flexing his powerful muscles, Superman leaps and like an arrow shot from a bow, flashes across the lawn and lands on top of the figure. Cut it out! Let's go on! Hurry, sonny boy, the party's over! Come on, what was the idea? All right, Candy, give out. Candy, I don't believe it. You weren't responsible for all this. Why, you you couldn't have been. Well, I got to confess. It was all my brilliant idea. Brilliant? Why? Why? Oh, just a gag. A gag, gag. That's what you call a gag? Oh, it seemed like a gag at the time, Inspector. Uh, What I was trying to do was set up a mystery that none of you could solve in a million years. But what about the little men? Where are they? And what are they? Oh, they're out there on the lawn somewhere. I'll have to round them up. But what are they? Miniature mama set. A kind of monkey. Um, I brought them back from Brazil. You <laughs> ought to be horsewhipped for this. Look, I've got a good man to throw you in the can, Myers. Any other compliments? That's all right, <laughs> Candy. You had us puzzled for a while. It wasn't too bad. Uh, thanks, Kent. Now, uh, maybe you'll answer a question for me. Oh, I'll try. How did Superman get in on this? <laughs> that, Candy, is a mystery you won't be able to solve in a million years. And so ends the mystery of the little men. 
on The Adventures of Superman, which come to you now each week at this same time over many of these same ABC stations. Listen again next week when Superman tangles with an unseen menace in The Ghost of Billy Baker. Superman is a copyrighted transcribed feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and brings you radio's most fabulous character in thrilling stories of action, mystery, and adventure. So be sure to listen when you hear the familiar cry, Faster than a speeding bullet! More powerful than a locomotive! Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! <laughs> Superman is played by Bud Collier, Lois Lane by Joan Alexander. Music is composed and played by John Garth. This is Jackson Beck reminding you to be sure to listen next week to The Ghost of Billy Baker on The Adventures of Superman. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.